Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is trade and absolute advantage. This is beginning our unit on trade, and so to kick things off here, I thought I should briefly talk about how important trade is in international relations. Why should we care about this? And to hammer home this point, I'm just going to show you a couple of numbers, not anything too detailed, just to give you the idea about why this is so important. So international trade is really popular. If we look at the value of all the goods traded in 2002 in the entire world, that's not in the millions, it's not in the billions, that's $27.5 trillion in goods in 2010 alone. Just one year, $27.5 trillion worth of goods. That's a lot of money. And the United States by itself accounts for a heck of a lot of this. So in 2011, that's $3.8 trillion in U.S. international trade alone. So a lot of stuff is going around here. And so we should, at least in an introductory class to international relations, understand why this is all going on, what sort of the implications there are of all sorts of international trade. And so to start things off in this particular lecture, our big question is going to be, why do states engage in trade? And we're going to look at two different answers. The answer in this video is going to be the obvious answer, and the answer in the next video will be the not-so-obvious answer. So the obvious answer is absolute advantage. So one reason why states might want to trade is because they're better at producing goods than other states are, and other states are better at producing some goods than they are. So states can make what they're supposed to be good at or what they're better at and trade for what they aren't very good at making. So the easiest example here that I can come up with, and I think the most fun for the products that we're actually talking about here, is wine and tequila. So California produces a lot of wine. Grapes are really easy to grow in the Napa Valley region, so California winemakers can make very good wine and not actually have to pay too much to do that compared to trying to farm grapes in a climate that's not so conducive to vineyards. And in contrast, Mexico can produce a lot of tequila. Tequila is a derivative of agave, which grows in deserts. And so Mexico has a lot of desert space. And so agave is much easier to grow in the deserts than it is in a fertile region like Napa Valley. So I know a lot of people understand and see well, those are grapes, and not very many people know what agave is. That's what an agave plant looks like. So the pictures are there just for purely illustrative purposes. So we could say that California has an absolute advantage in making wine, while Mexico has an absolute advantage in making tequila. And so unsurprisingly, it's going to be the case that the states should specialize in what they're good at, so California should specialize in making wine, Mexico should specialize in making tequila, and then they should trade those products. So California should ship some wine off to Mexico, and Mexico should ship some tequila off to the United States. They should trade. So to just see this really quickly here, this is a production chart. So imagine that we're looking at one man's worth of, of labor over the course of a day. And in California, if this man goes out and makes wine, he'll be able to make 10 bottles of wine in one day's worth of labor. In contrast, in Mexico, because of how hard it is to grow grapes in a desert, he's not going to be able to make very many bottles of wine. He's only going to be able to make two bottles of wine in Mexico. Now, on the other hand, when we're talking about tequila, Mexico, really easy to grow agave plants. And so Mexico, this, this guy in Mexico can spend one day and produce eight bottles of tequila, whereas a similar worker in California would only be able to make four bottles of tequila. So obviously these guys aren't going to want to only drink wine. Californian people like wine, but they also want to have some tequila. And so if they were to not trade by themselves, they would still have to split the production time, right? So California would have to produce some bottles of wine and some bottles of tequila to make the market satisfied and everyone would get what they want, at least to some degree. And the same would be true in Mexico, where despite the fact that Mexico can't make very many bottles of wine, only two bottles for a day's worth of labor, as opposed to eight bottles of tequila, people in Mexico, Mexico are still going to want some wine. And so even if Mexico can't trade with California, they're going to have to split production and produce some of both. So... For example, perhaps it might look like this, where California would want to produce five bottles of wine and two bottles of tequila if they were left to their own devices and unable to trade, and Mexico would want to have one bottle of wine being made and four bottles of tequila being made per day of man labor. All right, so that's what you get in a trade or a world without trade. So that's the consumption of both California and Mexico in a world without trade. But now let's have the states specialize in what they're good at and allow for trade. 
So instead of California making five bottles of wine and two bottles of tequila, let's say California is just going to make all wine and Mexico is not going to be making one bottle of wine and four bottles of tequila, but it's just going to make all tequila. If they do that, it looks like this. So now California is making 10 bottles of wine, no bottles of tequila, and Mexico is making no bottles of wine and eight bottles of tequila. California could say, hey, you know what? I'll trade you three bottles of wine for three bottles of tequila, right? We're going to just switch things up. That's going to be the trade. Mexico would be like, all right, that sounds great. We're going to do that. And if that's the case, after that trade is made, then California will be consuming seven bottles of wine and three bottles of tequila. It's not producing or it's not consuming all 10 bottles of wine because it's traded three of them to Mexico, but it's gotten three bottles of tequila in return. And Mexico, again, is not producing or not consuming all eight bottles of tequila because they traded three to California. But in return, Mexico is getting three bottles of wine back. And you'll notice here that these consumption values are better than what the states would be able to get on their own. So back in this world without trade, consumption looked like this. And if we compare the two values here in the world with trade versus the world without trade, California is now getting seven bottles of wine, which is more than the five it would get if it were working on its own. And it's getting three bottles of tequila, which is more than it would be getting if it was just making two bottles of tequila on its own. And Mexico is also better off. Mexico is getting three bottles of wine, whereas before it was only getting one. And it's still keeping five bottles of tequila, whereas before it was only able to produce four. And so the states actually both end up better off. They're able to produce more goods and consume more goods in this world of trade. So the conclusion here is that when California has an absolute advantage in making wine and Mexico has an absolute advantage in making tequila, trade is good. We can specialize in what we're good at and then we can trade the value or trade the products and get a diversity in products despite the fact that we're only good at making one thing. So that's absolute advantage. That's a fairly trivial reason why states would want to trade. But the next question is, if what about you're living in a world where you're one state and you're better at making everything than another state? You might think to yourself, well, if I'm better at making everything than another guy, why should I bother trading? I could just produce stuff for myself and keep stuff for myself, and I'd always be better off without trading. And that's actually not the case. Trading is still smart in this instance, where one state is better at making everything, and we will see why that's the case in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this, and until next time, take care. Bye now.